Natural selection can accomplish amazing things, but there are very strong limits on what it can do. And in fact, understanding those limitations on what natural selection can do is, in my opinion and the opinion of my colleagues in evolutionary biology who think about medicine, those constraints are key to the use of our concepts in medicine. The first and most important constraint that Darwin, right from the beginning, wrote about at length and evolutionary biologists are constantly emphasizing is Natural selection only solves the problems it's already been given, that it's been given for a while. And my favorite way to think of this is space travel. Mm. You know, we have no ability to cope with going to outer space biologically. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd be surrounded by deadly radiation. We would lack Weightless. the gravity to sustain yeah. our... That's right, we would lack the gravity to sustain our musculoskeletal system, um, which is something that appeared in that movie uh, WALL-E. Mm -hmm. um, so many things would go wrong because natural selection hasn't given us this universal general purpose device called the body, perfectly healthy. It has instead given us a historical composite of solutions to what natural selection was faced with in the past. So evolution by natural selection is inherently facing backwards. Okay. We advance yeah. into the future facing backwards. backwards. Okay. That is the most fundamental constraint in what natural selection can accomplish. Natural selection cannot solve the problems of having a high biological or Darwinian fitness in our industrial environment. It hasn't been working on the problem long enough.